Warning! Warning! I am an idiot. I'm just a guy in a pole barn. Get it? Pole barn garage. Anything I say to do, you do at your own risk. I'm just some dude. Let that be your disclaimer. Let's get on with the show. Welcome back, friends and enemies, to another episode of Pole Barn Garage. What are we going to do today? Well, I want to put... I, I even wrote a list. So I got some rope light to put behind the uh, bullet holes, like some of you guys had suggested. And I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, so we'll probably work on that. Uh, we need to put pins on the trunk to hold the trunk lid down since we don't have any hinges. We need to reattach that quarter panel where it's ripped away from that rear filler panel. Uh, that shouldn't be no big deal. And then I'd like to work on this passenger door some. And if we get time, I think I'll go ahead and start rebuilding the steering components in the front end. Although that may warrant an episode in and of itself because that's like actual work. Let's just see where it takes us. That's kind of what we've been doing this whole time, right? So just in case you don't recall, here's why we need to do this. See, the quarter panel's held on by approximately nothing. And uh, I hear that's bad. So what we're gonna do is use this random piece of faux tread plate, I think. It fits in this corner pretty good. So what we'll do is just trace Something like that. And we'll cut along that line. Zip, zip, zip. Get right in there. And it's aluminum, you know, so we can maintain the weight reduction we got going on. And I think before I do that, I'm going to take a pair of channel locks and try to bend that down. Okay, that's just not gonna happen. And that's okay. That's the beauty of having zero expectations. You never disappoint. Aha! You know, someday when my YouTube channel is growing large and all the money's rolling in and I've bought my third yacht, Maybe I'll be able to buy a package of cutoff wheels. If we just layer in like that, you will see that <laughs> it's perfect. And, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a, a self-tapper. Yeah, you know, just this once. Ow! Son of a... Take four. Wow, that accomplished almost nothing. It's not really any better, but... We're just gonna call it good enough, because that's what we do around here. Sharp. Oh, at least it fits in around here. Something like that is, I guess, the best. <sighs> kind of like fishing for diamonds in a toilet. Don't think it's gonna happen. Actually, that right there is not bad. Let's install a witness mark. So I can come back, because if I let go of this, it's just going to fall. And maybe one on the bumper. Maybe it'll just stay and be cool. But if not, we have those. We can come right back to it. Somehow I managed to nail, like, exactly where it needs to be. I mean, all things considered, I think this is probably our best case scenario. I don't know about putting a spoiler on this thing. I feel like that's going to make it, like, fly away. In order to hold the decklet in place while I drill the holes, I've used this cobbled together ratchet strap that I found on the floor. That, that worked pretty good, actually. You know, if when this doesn't work, we may just throw a ratchet strap on it. It's, it's pretty solid. Not bad. And now release the tension off the ratchet strap so I can properly locate this. Always hog those holes out a little more than round. Yeah, we'll just eyeball our height adjustment. We want to keep the eyelid of this just above the quarter, I believe. When you're tightening your hood pins down, or trunk pins, don't feel obligated to put a wrench on the bottom side. Just stick your smallest, most useless screwdriver in there and use that to hold them still. There we go. Let's try I'll fit that. Nice. 
it's pretty good. I think we'll leave that one where it's at. Give this one an adjustment. Attitude adjustment incoming. That's good. It's got a little bit of that tension fit. You know, that way everything kind of fights against each other. And you can tell that my witness marks, you know, are exact. It looks like our dressing ring here fits pretty good on this side. I have to go find some pins. I don't think I have any. Well, I went ahead and put a pin in the rear too. You know, that way it'll not... Whoop. Ow! Sharp! Uh, there's going to be a very specific way of how to install this. And I used a bullet hole on the back here for this pin. Definitely not the most ergonomic thing in the world. There we go. Temporary hood pin. I just used a bullet hole to poke that out of. And once it has a pin in it, that'll, that'll hold it down. So there's our finished product for the deck lid. I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. I got a break one of my rules about not setting the car down because I need to order a drive shaft. Roadkill Customs, roadkillcustoms.com is going to help me out with that. So I need to go ahead and set the car down on the ground and make sure I get an accurate measurement for a drive shaft. Just because it's well, you know, pretty much all factory stuff, uh, that's not always what you want to go off of. It's better to have a true measurement. So I'll go ahead and show you how to measure for a drive shaft. And that means I have to reveal half of my plan for wheels on this thing, I guess. I mean, I don't have to, but here we go. Gregor's. Kind of dusty now, but they're in good shape. And I got two more coming, but they're on back order like everything else, so if I can't get them, plans may have to change. But let's toss these bad boys on here. Well, my buddies over at Lugnut Guys, I bought from them for years, and out of the blue, CEO of their company sends me an email and says, Hey, you need any lug nuts? Well, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. I'm telling you right now, you can't find a cheaper place to buy good quality lug nuts. Period. I mean, I think even if I'd have bought these, I think 20 of uh, these mag wheel lug nuts with washers, and they're the nice dome style, not the cheap press-in kind. I hate those. $17 or something like that. I mean, they're, I don't know. I could be wrong, but they're cheap. And cheap is good. <sighs> oh. Oh. oh, that's beautiful. Also, rear end, I think not where it's supposed to be. Now we got to use our imagination a little. But man, that's the stance. Back on the ground for the first time and first time in quite a while. Holy crap, this floor is cold. Ooh, kind of feels good. I bruised my tailbone. So when you measure for a drive shaft, you're going to need one of these strange devices that I rarely use. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just measure from the back part of the transmission output housing to the flat part of the pinion yoke on the rear end. Uh, this rear end is not in here right. Something's wrong. We're probably blessed to have that other rear end because uh, the pinion angle is just all kinds of jacks. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is just go right from the flat part of the trans 
And hopefully my wingspan's long enough if I can just reach the other one. Yeah, that looks like factory spec, actually. Seven and five eighths. All right, we're within factory spec. So that it hasn't stretched. Yay. Oh, my ass. So I want to at least wrap this up before we move on to anything else. And what we've got here is some kind of generic garbage uh, stick-on LED light. And it's blue because, well, that's what I had. And uh, my dad gave this to me, and that's what uh, it is. So it's blue. The sticky factor of this stuff leaves much to be desired. But I have a solution. Behold, Dollar Tree holographic tape. And this stuff is alarmingly sticky. I just take a chunk of this and this sticks pretty good. Continue to do that. And we're just going to encircle the whole trunk in it. And uh, then it goes to this, you wire this little controller into it. And then. You got one of these key fob things, and you just turn it on, and boom, you can dim it, and I think you can make it flash and stuff. We, we could probably do some cool stuff with it for like burnouts, you know, make it like strobe, and all the smoke, that'd be cooler than hell. So I, I'm hoping that's what we can do here. Oh boy, more wiring. Basically, we're just gonna take the red one and put it to the red one, and then the black one and put it to the black one. There we go. Kaboomy. I don't know if this baby's infrared, like you gotta point right at it to turn it on, or if it's, uh, you know, one of the mother ones that kinda, you know, you know, you don't have to point right at it. You know, one thing to remember with these LED lights is they are polarity sensitive. And uh, if you put them on backwards, they uh, won't work. We got stuff happening already. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's gonna give me a seizure. Uh, no. <laughs> huh. It's got a battery in it. Fascinating. <laughs> Dang it. Hmm. Remote control, two L's. Please pull out the insulate part before using. Well, that's useless. Well, it's getting hot. So that's probably bad. We're gonna have to wire it to a toggle switch. But at least it's cool looking. It's like the stars in the nighttime sky. I mean, it does pretty much do what I wanted it to do. I'm thinking we put some, like, mirror stuff on the bottom of the deck lid, and that'll, like, reflect it down even better. We're just going to wire it up to the toggle switches on the, you know, I have some extras up there. It'd be no big deal. We'll just switch the ground, and we can have it. Well, we're back in here, and while it may seem mighty obvious to some of you, it may not to others, so I'm going to mention it real quick. When you're doing a toggle switch, you can switch the ground rather than the power. And uh, that's what we're going to do here for our lights back there. So we got this pigtail uh, coming out and we'll ground it somewhere. This guy right here coming out of the dash is coming from the back of the car. And uh, when we hook him up to the toggle switch, we can just, you know, boom. And now it's grounded. Now it turns on. And there we go. We will not let the Lao Main's lousiness stop us. All right, listen here, door. You and me's gonna have a little talk. You guys had some great ideas on how to fix up this here door. And uh, they're all better ideas than what I'm about to try. Maybe this will just work. I doubt it, but I mean, it's worth a shot, right? Hey. Holy crap, it's working. Huh. 
That door is way better. Look at that. That worked. That worked remarkably well. This is still less than good. I think I'm just gonna have to cut that crash bar out. And yeah, it'll be somewhat dangerous, but you know what? I mean, I don't really think it matters. I, I really don't even care about it. I just want this to close up for the passengers so you're not you know, cutting the crap out of yourself. I tried bending this crash bar back in and I just didn't have any luck with it at all. And it's not, it's not even attached anyway. I don't think I'm missing anything by cutting it out. If we get real paranoid, we could always throw a piece of angle or a round tube in there or something to kind of, you know, give it some support again. But if I get that out, then we could push this up. And not only that, I think we could put a window in it. Goodbye. Hmm. Uh, half of it. Half is good enough, probably. Well, the big one's out of the way. Well, look at all that crap in the bottom of that. Yep, not going to clean any of that. Oh, well, that was easier than I'd anticipate. Uh oh, I screwed something up. Did it move down, or am I crazy? Uh -huh. Hinge pins are still good in it. Well, this, uh, you know, kind of worked once, so let's try it again. Well, I guess that's just how it is. Okay, I have another roll of that rope light stuff. Put some inside of the doors, kind of run it in one door and under the dash and back. And uh, that'll be kind of fun. That's what we're gonna do next. Um, you know, I already showed you once, so we'll probably just, you know, I'll see you in a little bit. So here's what we got going on. You know, it's done really well and cleanly ran, you know, like this. That's pro stuff there, you know, you learn that in electrician school. I gotta hook it up still, but the lights themselves kinda run under there and over to the other door. It'd be kind of neat, I think. It'd be like blue glowing, you know, as, you're, as we're prowling the streets looking for prey. Or, you know, just, just trying to survive. There we go. This should be pretty fun to drive at nighttime like that. I didn't have enough to do this door all the way, but yeah, I think it'll get the job done. Pretty cool. I'm happy. All right, I think it's time we should go ahead and, you know, make this thing a little safer. So thankfully, our friends over at Holly sent uh, a whole bunch of Pro Forged steering components. And uh, Pro Forged is a good brand. Uh, they're kind of a, a name, anyway. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, not step by step, but I want to hit the key parts of what it takes to build you, a, or rebuild your steering. Because this applies to just about any GM car. You've got many components to your steering luggage. You've got inner and outer tie rods. Now the cool thing about Pro Forged is they're all E-coated. So this stuff is like rust proof or something. And... Uh, it's good stuff. Uh, I've used their parts before. Now, the other part of your tie rod is an adjusting sleeve. 
And in keeping with our budget mind, you know, I didn't go for anything fancy. Uh, I didn't go for, yeah, they have like solid adjusting sleeves that I have on other cars. This is just a factory style adjusting sleeve. So basically you take your inner and outer tie rod, one's left hand thread and one is right hand thread. And you want to get them set about even with each other. Because the way you're actually going to adjust this is by, once these are bolted into the vehicle, you'll just turn this and that's gonna, you know, it's gonna expand or contract this tie rod link. And that's how you set your toe, which is, you know, your, your wheels doing this, doing this, you know. You can adjust that just by simply adjusting that sleeve there. That factory sleeve is very prone to bump steering because uh, it allows the tie rod to flex. And if you can afford a little bit more, go for the go for the solid adjusting sleeve. But if you can't, well, you can get those at any part of the store. And I know I always, you know, safety third, right? But the steering is an important thing. You don't want to fool around with that. I've had ball joints break and fall out. And, well, you might notice I'm not putting ball joints in it, but you know, you don't want to lose a tie rod in or your idler arm snap or something like that at 70 miles an hour. It's not going to be good, especially in this. The other key component, especially for these GMA bodies, is the idler arm. And it's a cheap, easy fix. A lot of times, if you've got one that's like real wandery or the steering's real jerky in it, like when you hit a bump, bump steer, it's usually the idler arm. That's causing that. Uh, you know, your rest of your stuff may be okay, but the idler arm is key. This bolts to the frame, and it, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not an engineer, but it, it positions everything over there. It gives you a, it's like a steering, like a point for it to pull and push from. And if this wears out, man, you'll, <laughs> you'll know it. There's a two tie rod, you know, there's a two inners and two outers for each side. But what do they hook to? Well, they hook to this big old son of a gun. This is called your steering link, your center link, or drag link sometimes. And you can see that it is equally pretty. This is a nice piece, and honestly, it's sometimes kind of hard to find. I was shocked that they had it. And dude, let me tell you, this is the big one, okay? Proforge seems to sell the, there's two diameters for A-body cars. And this is a, man, she's girthy. Basically, your tie rod end sits on that like that. And then this end is what actually turns the wheel. One more thing. They sent me a, a, steering, a, a sway bar end link. And this car needs one. It's missing one. So I got one. Because I still, regardless of all this fancy parts, I'm still doing it. Dirt cheap. Basically, the sway bar just ties both of your lower control arms together. So when you corner, one's not, when the weight comes off of this, it's not, you know, doing this number. You want them to be even and held solid. All right. We're under here. I need to... Sway bar bushings, pretty bad, I just noticed. Also, it's leaking gasoline, and I've had my heater pointed directly at it for weeks. So that's good. Other than that, everything looks, you know, bad. What do we do? Well, the first thing you should do anytime you're working on your front end is just see what's bad. Oh, I'm leaking tranny fluid, too. Dang, God, I should have never looked. You can feel what's bad just by giving everything a, a wiggle. Honestly, I don't think any of this stuff needs changed, but it is all definitely factory parts. Which, you know, that might be kind of shocking to some of you, but man, they made stuff to last back then. You, you'll get some mileage out of this stuff. It's not, a, not uncommon. What do you use to separate these things? You use the mighty pickle fork, even though I'm pretty sure this is a ball joint separator. You pretty much just stick that in there and then wail on it with a hammer until it falls apart. And uh, when that doesn't work, you resort to a bigger hammer. The thing on this damn car is an archeological dig. It's one of the downsides of buying something that's been on a gun range for 40 years, I guess. You got a couple of choices when you're dealing with these nuts. And I'm not just talking about this nut. <laughs> I think I've pulled every muscle in my body trying to work on this thing.
Behold, the prehistoric impact. Save the castle nuts. That's something I learned a long time ago. If you try to go to the parts store when you need one damn castle nut, you gotta buy 47 of them, and 46 of them you'll never use for anything. Go easy. Just, just go. Go. Hey. Well, I'll be damned. That's not bad. Get that lucky five or six more times, I'll be happy. And they make a fancy thing that goes on your uh, air hammer, and you can just. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I've never had the nineteen dollars and forty-seven cents that it would take for that. So I just kind of grab the threads and try to pull in and out. And that's going to tell you if that socket in there is wore out. These are <laughs> remarkably good. Good enough that I'll keep them. <laughs> That sounds crazy, but uh, this is a perfectly good... Oh, it's bent. No, it isn't. Is it bent? Is that bent? I don't think it's bent. No, it's fine. Oh, a little, little gritty, but... Hell, I'll keep it around as a spare. Let's get rid of this idler arm end. Ah. It's raining crap! Huh. Let's... This whole thing's been through the ringer. I've spread it apart and bent it back. God, who knows how many times. The reason I opted to buy new adjusting sleeves, even though these could have been salvaged, is for this reason right here. To get the exact alignment we already had, all I gotta do is match this one. So one thing I wanna point out that I'm kind of impressed by is uh, these Proforge tie rod ends are way beefier than, uh, than the factory stuff. You'll notice a difference there in your driving, you know, you're hitting bumps and stuff like that. This is gonna soak up a lot more. Uh, the car, you know, might actually handle better. I, you know, well, you know, another car would probably handle better. You wanna do this in even amounts. That's key so you maintain your adjustability. Now, if you are like me and forget everything immediately, and you wonder, hey, which one of these was the inner and outer? The one with the zert on the side is always your inner, because that sits up in the uh, uh, on the center link, and the only way to get it, you couldn't get on the back side. And I have noticed that on some parts store tie rod ends, they are all have a zert on the back, and on these cars, if you do that it'll drag right into the oil pan. And that's bad. And it's pretty close by my eyeball gauge. How do these work? Well, you've got an open side. This thing's like a clamshell, right? So just take that and then you can tighten down on it and it just locks it onto the threads. It's real simple, but I've seen it screwed up from shops actually and uh, they'll put it on like this or something like that that doesn't work then your clamping force is squeezing this way got here is the original garbage and uh, it's fine actually pickle fork died it's a shame I'll have to give it a proper burial tomorrow a significant upgrade especially look at this dinky little idler arm here compared to you know this freaking thing I mean it's twice the size
Well, it's in and assembled. And I always put this stuff together loose to start with. You know, just to give you some extra wiggle. And uh, we needed it for this, because the extra girth of uh, these parts uh, made it a, it, it's a tight squeeze in here. I'm just gonna tighten everything up. And then let's see how bad our alignment looks, because, you know, I, I think it's not right. You can only properly adjust alignment with the vehicle weight on the ground. You can kind of eyeball it, you know, get sort of close while it's in the air, but it's got to have the weight on it, and it's got to be sitting at right height. Well, we're going to knock that out, or, you know, just get it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want a little bit of toe in. Just a bit, not a lot. That, uh, that'll keep the car from being, you know, skittish. And I, I might take it to an alignment shop. Oh, I will take it to an alignment shop. And boy, that's going to be... <laughs> I can't wait to see what they say. Now, I want you guys to watch this passenger front wheel as it lowers down. See how that thing kind of settled out a little bit? Right now, we're making a... Uh, well, a little bit of a left with that one. Now this one, we're making a little bit of a right. So both of them need to come out just a bit. My God, look at my hands. I just noticed that. All right, here we are under here. And we want to go out. Now that's the other nice thing about those solid uh, adjusting sleeves that I was mentioning, is that they're made with a hex head. And uh, being made with a hex head, they uh, are very easy to adjust. These are not. How about three turns each? Now as you make your adjustment, just lean on the car a little bit, at least, and just kind of load the suspension of it. Then just kind of take a look. We're dealing with very minute adjustments here. And, uh, you know, somebody more qualified than me should be doing it. You can see there, it's not too bad. It's not really making a turn. It's just towed in a little bit. And there we go. There's a steering system that should be quite a bit safer, a little stronger. So sway bar links. It's an easy job that anybody can do. They're inexpensive and uh, immediate performance benefits. There's really not much to tell, except for gotta have the car on the ground. And uh, there is an order to how this goes. If you have the old ones to look at, you'll be able to tell. If you don't, well, I'll show you. These are shaped a particular way. This side is like, uh, I don't know how you call that, extruded to stick through the hole in the control arm and the sway bar link. The idea is to sandwich all of the components between bushings, of course. So they have these special cup washers, and you put it with the cup side up like it would hold water like that and then you stick this through the control arm and then this next one will go like this it's very important I actually see this done wrong a lot uh, keep those you know that in extruded exverted side there that needs to be through that hole or you wear your bushings out real fast Ooh. Concrete's nice and warm right here. Save your old bushing sleeves. Sway bar length sleeves, these are very handy. And then we force it into place. And you just want to tighten her down until it just, just starts to compress those bushings. Call it a day. I want to yank these spring spacers out here uh, to drop the front end down just a bit. I kind of busted that one up, but man, they're in there. like. They work. There's one side out. Dude, these things are a bugger. I guess if I ever need spring spacers, I'm going for those. Well, I think it brought it down, I don't know, maybe an inch, half an inch. It's pretty good. It's about what I wanted. I, uh, I didn't take any measurements before or anything, but it's definitely lower. I like this stance a little bit better. I think it's just about ideal. And... It's got a little give to it now, that's nice. So guys, that kicked my ass. butt, butt, kicked my butt. I look like some kind of walking EPA violation. So anyway, I was talking about being in a rush earlier, and uh, 
the reason for that is, is today is like February 12th, something like that. And uh, there's an Autorama World of Wheels uh, here in Kansas City. And uh, I'm going to try to put this in there. So it's obviously not going to be complete or legal to drive, but uh, we can uh, get it close. You know, we, we can make it functional by then if we really bust. And I think that means I got to put the new rear end in the car. Uh, I need the looks of it for one. And two, I don't know if that thing will drive around a couple of blocks downtown. And I don't want to find out down there that it won't. We officially have a, uh, we're going to lose the shop deadline. I was going to grease the front end of the car, but I cannot find my grease gun. And my brain has left the building. So, uh, if you guys have seen my grease gun in the background of the videos, go ahead and leave it in the comments if you would. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that like and comment. And let's, you know, let's get active. Let's, the more active it is, the more it grows. So, I don't even care if you hate me. Just, you know, go hate me in the comments if you would. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, hit the bell, subscribe, share, share with your friends, share it on your Facebook page, share it on your Instagram, share it wherever, whatever you do, or wherever you go, print flyers off, put lost dog, and then, you know, actually it's a GTO, and put those on telephone poles. And uh, thanks again to Holly uh, for helping out, I mean, that's, you're just helping out, sending some budget parts to us, and it's stuff I need, I mean, come on. If you buy anything from Holly, please tell them I sent you. That would be super helpful. And anyway, signing off for Pole Barn Garage. Uh, you all have a good one, and take it easy.